think I'd been gone. So thank you. Thanks for the welcome back. If you're here today for the first time, I'm Larry Bach. I'm the, uh, the absentee pastor for the last four weeks. And it's so nice. I, they want me to crowd surf. I'm not going to do that. So, so well, it would be funny though, wouldn't it? I'd make it about to there. So, and the floor is hard. Today, I want to talk to you about the state of the church and uh, a little different twist than what we've done in the past. But it's, what is the state of the church address? We know what it is to the, con- to the country, the state of the union. But I'm not talking about politics. What I want to, really want to bring you up to date on is who we are as Suncoast Community Church and what we've done this last year and what may happen in the near future. But, but let me challenge you for a couple of thoughts first. What is the church? It's not this building. It's not this campus. It's the people who show up. So state of the church address is not just saying this is what we've done as a community, but I want to get a little more personal in your life today and challenge you to have more of an open heart for some things of God. So how are we doing? That's the question of this teaching. So let me give you the mission globally. At Suncoast, we simply say our mission is simple, to live as Jesus would in our story. We want to live lives that would reflect Christ living in us. I grew up in a very conservative church home, a very conservative tradition. And one of the things that's important that, you know, first of all, you get saved, which is important. The second thing they want you to do is get sanctified. You know, and I go, what in the world does that mean? And for most of us, uh, that was a strange word, but really to get saved is is get in relationship with God, to get sanctified really is where you come before God and you say, God, I want, the word sanctified means to set apart. It was used for the dishes in the ancient temple. These dishes were used specifically only for God's use. They weren't used any other time. And this concept is, is simply, I want my life to be used of God, and I'm setting my life apart for God's use. And it's not like you're going to be a, a priest or a nun. It's simply saying that in my everyday journey, I'm going to try to make sure that God is first in my life. And I'm grateful for that part of my tradition, fair enough, because I think it's a very biblical thing to live a Christ-like life. So how are we doing? To live as Jesus would in our story. So Christ is living a Christ-like community. So who are we in our vision? We want to be an innovative church community that continually learns, challenges, and grows. Today is an exciting day for Suncoast Community Church because I get to stand before you, and this is my 21st or 22nd year, let's say, started in 1998, so this would be number 22. We actually have our completion of 22 years in July. But, but, but it really is, I've been the lead pastor for that amount of time. And you say, you're the lead guy? Are you the most qualified guy? Maybe not, but I got here first. I mean, that's what makes the difference. You just got to be first up. You don't have to be the smartest guy. You got to get there early. You got to be able to run fast. But 17 and a half years ago, after the church had been formed for just a few years, I felt like I needed to take some time off and just spend some individual quiet time. And I went away. I left my home, my wife, my kids for 40 days on a spiritual journey. And I really was seeking the direction that God had for us as Suncoast. I drove to Nashville, went back to my home, went back to where I was a boy at nine years old. I felt this first call of God upon my life that I'm going to be a pastor someday at nine years old. I went back to where I reaffirmed that at 16 years old and reaffirmed it again at 18 years old. I went back to the college that I first attended in Nashville. And then I, from there, I went to the first place I pastored in Lake City, Florida. Lake City is a very small town and just on 75. And when I got there the first week, there were 25 people in my congregation. That's it. 25. I visited everyone the first week and the second week. After that, they said, you've seen us enough. We're okay. Thank goodness the church grew or I'd have been driving the other people away. But from there, I went to Monticello, Florida, where I'd pastored. And I prayed for these congregations I prayed for the people who still were there, and I didn't pray for buildings. I prayed for people. I went to every church location where I pastored, and I prayed for every congregation. I asked God to bless them. But on my journey, I was continually looking for God's presence and his will. What does he have for us? What do you see? God, I want to be so open to you. I want to see what you see for the future. And I told you the story about going to North Carolina to the forest 
where I hiked back in about three miles. And I remember the story of Joshua where he says, go over before the ark of the Lord when they crossed through the Jordan River. And as they walked through on dry ground, he sent 12 guys back to pick up a stone as a memorial that God did something here. And later on, they, they piled them up. When you see these stones later, what are these stones doing here? Well, that's where we crossed the Jordan on dry ground. And I remember being in that forest and having one of those God moments and picking up a rock. And I brought that rock in here before. It wasn't a little rock, it's like this big. I remember coming out of the forest thinking, why didn't I get a smaller rock? It would have been so much easier. But I spent time in prayer that God would make a difference, not for me, but for you. That God would help Suncoast always be a church that was about the heart of God. As honest as we can, the best we know, we're going to deliver what we think is appropriate for us. And there are several things I want to share with you today as we continue this journey and also some new things that result in my recent time with God. Yeah, I used to formulate a plan. I love this, the acronym for plan. The, you know, the P-L-A-N. First thing you do is pray. It's an important thing. You have to be at least in the spirit of prayer. The second on the L is listen. When I pray, I quit talking and I start listening. You know, a lot of people say, well, let's recite the prayer. Let's recite the prayer. And there's lots of prayers we can recite. And well, let's give God our list, our Christmas list of all the things we want him to do in our lives. Now, I do mention names of people that are going through a hard time when I pray. But most of the time I'm saying, God, this is my time. I want to connect with you and I want to hear what you have for us. And that's PL, pray, then listen, and then advance. See, I'm one of those guys that believes that you need to do something. You know, become proactive for God. When you come to a fork in the road, Yogi Bear said, what? You take it. Doesn't say left or right, you just take it. You know, I, I've heard people say, well, in my life I just wait, and there's a philosophy in churches that have been around for a long time. I don't adhere to it, so I'll tell you what it is. It's called the open door philosophy. When the door's open, I go through that door. When the door's open, I go through that door. I don't operate by that philosophy. Because I think water seeks the path of least resistance. As it flows, it goes through where it is. This is what I've practiced in my life. God, if you whisper to me the direction I'm to go, I will kick the doors down. Because this is where the stream needs to flow. This is where it needs to be. And it's not about me. It's about his presence in our life. So I pray, I listen, I believe in advancing and being proactive. And the, the N, P-L-A-N, N is now. There's no time like the present. We live in a world of procrastination. We live in a world, let's do it tomorrow. But there's a time to sow, a time to reap, and there's a time to wait and a time to act. And waiting is okay, but it should be a decision, not the lack of one. I'm waiting because I can't make up my mind. No, I make up my mind, I need to wait for a while. Because sometimes you need to wait. You shouldn't have everything the first day of your life. As a young married couple, you probably won't have all the things your, your parents took their whole life to accumulate. It just takes some time. It's okay to wait for things. Suncoast in its 22nd year, for nine years, we worshiped in a school setting. During the time we bought this land, we built this facility, we've moved prayerfully, decisively to make a difference. And now we've been here for 12 and a half years. You know what it, we could do? So, you know, our drive was to build the building, buy the land. Now that we've got it, let's just sit back and relax. But that's not who I am. There's always something. There's always, the stove is always on in my life. There's always something down the way. There's always something in the future. My wife asked me once in a while, why are you doing that? I said, I don't know. Maybe it's ADHD. Maybe it's because I, I, I don't know. I do know this. I, I came back from this trip and I, I got a cold as soon as I got back. And it's hard to get over this coronavirus. No, I was not in China. It's a cold, no fever. And someone said, if you take anything for it, I've taken Mucinex, I've taken Claritin D, I've taken vitamin C, zinc. I've taken so much medicine. Every time I cough, people all around me are being healed. <laughs> Fair enough. Think about that for a minute. But, but in my quiet time for this teaching, you know, I begin to ask, what do you need today? What does my community need? What does the church community overall need? And I came up with this one word I think is important. It's hope. We need to think about a future. I mean, wouldn't it be great to help people discover that there's a purpose for their life, that 
life is not meaningless, which is nihilism. It's, there's hope. Wouldn't it be great to be able to help people find friends? We live in such a mobile society today. So many of us are disconnected from our original homes or families or kids are there or grandkids are spread across the nation. But we moved to an area like Sarasota. Most of us weren't born here or raised here. But we come here and we find a sense of friendship and community. So I think one of our goals is we want people to find hope. We want them to help discover friendships. And wouldn't it be awesome if somewhere, everywhere we went, our hearts were open to say, God, I want to be like the cups that were used in the old days, used for your purpose. I want to be one of the instruments that you use to make a difference in the world. Today's studies tell us that many people are shopping, looking for a church home. But how do you shop for that which you don't know exactly what you're looking for? I love to tell this story. I've told it before, but I go to the kitchen And it's interesting because Becky's the one who puts everything in the fridge. I'm the one who takes it out. And I go look in the refrigerator. And honestly, I have the door open. And we have one of those beepers that goes off when the refrigerator door has been too open. It's beeping and I'm still looking. She goes, what are you looking for? I go, I don't know. But when I find it, I'll know. And I'm searching around. You know those plastic containers that are in there? I hate those things. You have to take the lid off and then it doesn't go back on right. And then I've discovered it, and I, I don't, I'm not ashamed of this, I just don't like leftovers. So a lot of leftovers in there, she eats those, I don't eat those. A lot of people do and a lot of, you know, now there's a couple exceptions. Lasagna. I'm willing to eat cold leftover lasagna any day. But most of the things I don't, but I, but I do know that the world is starving and they're at the refrigerator door, they're looking, what am I looking for in a church? I don't know. But maybe I'll know it when I find it. And I think what most people are looking for, after a lot of time of thought, is is hope, community, a deeper connection with God. I want to feel like that my life matters. Suncoast Community Church is a church that doesn't look like a church. I talked to an attorney this week. He said, well, you know, something about coffee. I was going to a meeting. I spilled coffee on my shirt. And he said, yeah, it's like being in church. I have a spare shirt at church in case I get spill coffee on myself or one of you hugs me and spills it down my back. Have you done that before? Yeah, there's a few of you. You know who you are. But I do appreciate, I do appreciate Jeff who did it and bought me a new shirt. And a, a nice Yeti cup. I tell Jeff, here, pour away, man. It's worth it. Just go for it. But Suncoast is a church that doesn't look like a church, but we're a church that wanted to make a difference in the world. We're a church that I believe teaches the life-changing, the transformational truths of Christ. And our goal really is to see people's lives transformed when they begin to understand who God is and we find out who he is the more we study Jesus. See, people should be helped through the process of spiritual growth because sometimes we don't know what we're looking for. It needs to be intentional if you want to grow. It rarely happens by chance. But what is Suncoast? It's not just one pastor or 15 staff or three services. It's this powerful God-filled community that seeks to introduce a world to the teachings of Christ. That's who we are. So what is Suncoast? What's a church that doesn't look like a church? To reach our culture, I think we need to look less like a church and more like a community. We have some things that are wonderful. Let me tell you, I'm bragging on some of the things I really like. We have children's ministry that happens here that's just unparalleled anywhere. We have a great children's staff, and they do a great thing. And kids need to understand truth, telling the truth, honesty, integrity, respect, values, home. And they're teaching them these principles, these Jesus principles back on the other side. We're a generation, like I said, that's lost community because of the mobility. We need this sense of family. So I really am bragging about the children. Other part I brag about is our youth ministry. Includes those struggling with adolescent issues. You know, there's a lot of kids in today's society. Did you see today their tents when you drove in over here? They spent the night last night. So here's what I want you to know. If you want to spend the night in a tent, you can. But you need to be evaluated psychologically. If not before, you definitely will need it after. You spend some time with middle schoolers. It takes a special gift for those people. And I want to brag on those who do that because I'm so appreciative of that. I mean, I'm grateful for that youth ministry. I'm also glad for a church that's impacting our area for Christ. 
my heart's desire is that we see thousands more. So what are our values at Suncoast? You know what they are, but I'll mention them quickly. We're a hospital, not a courtroom. Many churches are reaching the culture, but the culture they're reaching is usually church people that transplant or church people that move around. They didn't have my brand of coffee, so I'm going to a different church. Not that bad. But we simply say we want to reach the unchurched segment. Now, we appreciate those who are here who've come from other churches. That's great. I've called us the church that really is the island of misfit toys. So if you don't fit somewhere else, maybe you fit here. I know that's why I'm here. And what you can find here is community, and I'm grateful for that. So we're a hospital, not a courtroom. Secondly, we encourage people to take responsibility for their lives. What does that mean? If you blame someone for everything you do, if you blame the police officer for pulling you over when you're going 80 miles an hour down a 50-mile-an-hour road, it's not his fault. It's yours. And if you blame someone for the spouse that you have, they didn't say, I do. Well, I, I didn't blame anybody else. I just want to blame God. God, it was the woman you gave me. That's a biblical quote. That's what Adam said about Eve. But really, it wasn't God's fault. It's our fault. And we, when we take responsibility for the, the screw-ups we have in life, the, the disasters we have in life, the choices that we made that are poor choices, when we take responsibility, then there's the possibility of change. If I'm blaming someone else, then I stay the same. But the truth is we probably all need to grow and change in certain areas of our lives. So we want to help people take responsibility for their lives. Thirdly, we say everyone brings something to the table. To be a part of a community means that you have to do something within the community. Some of, you, some of you, we appreciate your gifts. We've never passed the offering plate here, but you've sought out the boxes in the back, the electronic means, and some of you financially support us. You're bringing something to the table. Thank you for that. There are others who are bringing something to the table when they sign up and they greet in one of the areas of the church. They're, they're greeters at the front door. Maybe when you bring something to the table today, you say, I give you enough guilt trip today, which I shouldn't do it, but maybe you need to sign up to do this. <laughs> Just one hour. And you're at least saying, okay, I've never done this before. It's a one-time deal. I won't have to do it again. But, but it is something that you can do. And we'd appreciate if you would because we all bring something to the table. We're a church that embraces young adults. We allow them at the leadership table. We allow them on the stage. Aren't you glad we allow them on the stage? I mean, they're tremendous. It, if we become a church of only older adults at the leadership table, only older adults on the stage, We'll become a church of only older adults. And you know what I've discovered as I'm becoming an older adult? I want to hang around younger adults because it helps me feel younger. And it seems like my colleagues, my friends, we're all a part of that. You're either young or young at heart. What's the other option? Old. And I look around here and I don't see anyone old here. I see a church of youngsters. And some of you I've traveled with, you are youngsters. And you're older than I am, but you're very much younger in so many areas. But a church has a heart for people, local, global. So what have we done together this year? Let me tell you what we've done. Well, because of some help, and thank you, for, Steve, for being here, but 20,000 cards have been mailed several times in the last few months just trying to help people know about us because we need to get the word about it at Suncoast. Even the Bounce Blast card, this was mailed out. I just got mine in the mail this week. Showing the community, if you want to come to a free event, come to a Bounce Blast. It's a lot of fun. So we're trying to get the word out about us. Another way that we're making a difference in our world, we, we host a, an excellent charter school called Suncoast Academy. I will say this fairly clearly. Suncoast Academy is not a Christian school. It is not a church school. It meets on this campus. It is an independent 501c3. It has nothing to do with this church. Well, maybe a little. But organizationally, legally, it has nothing to do. So, Pastor, how do you know that? Because I'm the one who wrote the charter. I'm the one who really founded the school many years ago. I don't run the school. Thank goodness we have Steve Crump that does that. He does a fantastic job. He's a great principal. And many of our children attend this great academy, but we're making a difference in the fact that we built a building that would host this wonderful public school. We also help Mothers Helping Mothers, 18,000 pounds you guys sorted this year. Lifehouse Counseling, 80 subsidized counseling sessions. Suncoast Community Blood Bank has been here. Blaze of Hope is an organization we support. I mean, help kids who've gone through cancer and help families when they have bills. Over 1,400 backpacks given to safe children 
empowerment raised eleven thousand dollars, which is part of us to help young adults who are working find a greater financial stability. Over ten thousand meals bought and packaged to rise against hunger. Three thousand in gift cards in the Christmas season. Two hundred ten oil changes. Thirty cars. This is a record for us. Thirty cars given away last year. So what else? Well, let's talk about the simple things. The more important things. A thousand T-shirts. 65,000 donut holes. Now we're really getting serious. 12,500 cups of coffee, 10,000 volunteer hours. Thank you for those of you who are being, who have brought it to the table. If you're participating in any way, you're doing that. And we want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart for whatever you do. You're wearing one of the Suncoast Community shirts. Thank you for wearing that shirt. We could not do this without you not just in the greeting, but the children's ministry uses about 100 volunteers a month. So he said, I'm not interested in kids. If you hate kids, please don't work in children's ministry. <laughs> Fair enough. If you hate teens, do not go over there. But there are other areas. There's worship areas, tech, children, hospitality, prayer, greeters, students, office help, building and grounds. If you want to mow the grass, we can help you with that. Gathering groups that have just been started. But you find out about those on the tour next Sunday at 10 o'clock. So if you want to go to the tour, sign up for it. It's in your, in your folder. In addition, we teach an in-depth Bible study. Brett does that on Thursday night. Now for something new. I just got ready for a trip to go to South America. And they told me all the different things that I, they were to bring. And I tried to bring those things. And if you were to tell some friends coming down from Indiana or Michigan or wherever up north, and you said, I want you to come to Sarasota. I want you to come this time of year. What would you tell them to bring? Well, bring your toothbrush, bring your shoes. But here we'd say, bring your bathing suit, your beach attire, bring your phone, your camera, bring your sunglasses. Most importantly, bring your sunscreen. I can't tell you how many college students have come to my home during Easter break and I say, do you have sunscreen? No, I buy a lot of it. Here, take sunscreen. And they come back and they're just burnt to a crisp. One of them is the lady who sings here, Marissa, who sings on a regular basis. She came home from college. I told her the same thing. She could barely walk. Why didn't you do it? Of course, I look at her in my mind and there's the word stupid. <laughs> you were warned and she admits it and I tease her about it to this day. But it's simply to say, you can ruin your vacation by not applying sunscreen. So what can I suggest for you for a new year to bring? So I'm gonna give you three things. First thing I wanna suggest you do, bring an open heart to be used of God. In our spiritual life, we're all on a journey and if I could share a tip with you, it'd be always pick up a stone from the riverbed. Why? Because these stones mean something to the future. If you pick up a stone through every circumstance of your life, I would say not just on every mountain experience, most importantly, every time you've been through a valley, you've been through a distressed time, pick up a stone as a reminder that God was with you. You say, well, what do you mean? I mean, every trial, every divorce, every cancer, every heartache. There's a stone we can pick up to take with us to remind us that God was with us during this time. He's faithful. An open heart allows us to find meaning in every difficulty. Always pick up a stone. Always take a moment for reflection. Why? Because God is interesting in our hearts growing, developing. In Suncoast Community Church, we have a lot of people coming through our doors. And some pastors are interested in how many come in. I know I'm one of those. But you know what I'm more interested in is in your life, in your heart. I'm more interested in that you find hope for the future. See, I want God to come alive for you because he's all around us. And you, you don't have to miss him if your eyes are open to who he is. And I think there's more joy in life when you're connected with him. You can become the best version of who you were, God created you to be if you're connected with him. Often we're interested in God meeting our needs. But this year there's another suggestion for us. And it's this, God is interesting in using us to meet the needs of a multitude. They walk through the, dry, the sea on dry ground to possess the promised land, through the river. And the promised land is, is only a, one part of this covenant that God had with Abraham. You know, there's supposed to be land, descendants as many as the stars in the sky. But the third part, that you will be a blessing to the world. Wouldn't it be great if we became a blessing? We're so God-filled so to use the word sanctified, so we're set apart to where we're saying, okay, God, I want you to use me. 
and we begin to be faithful. We give back. We get involved in others' lives. See, faithfulness is just doing what you should do on a repeated basis. It's being Christ-like, not just in this moment, but being Christ-like on a regular basis. So a challenge in 2020, bring an open heart, be willing, give back to the community because God just not just about meeting my needs, but me meeting others' needs. And thirdly, the future will reflect our faithfulness. See, we need to pick up a few stones for future generations so they can see how God was faithful. Are you ready? I think you are. Let me read a letter for you. This came in just this week to me. Pastor Larry, my name is so-and-so. And I'm a 71-year-old vet, Vietnam veteran, several combat-related emotional disabilities. In addition, I recently had to place my wife, my best friend, of 51 years in a nursing home due to the ravages of Alzheimer's disease. As far as I was concerned, my life was over and I was become a regular on the VA suicide hotline. I gave up all my Catholic religion many years ago and kept all my spirituality deep inside privately between me and Jesus. In fact, I, I was all ready to give up on that as well. On how could a God who, who I love so much do such a horrible thing to my kind, wonderful wife? But then my neighbors, members of your church, I got their name, offered to take me with them to a Bible study class believing it might help me in some way to bring solace, at least get me out of the house where I was sobbing every night since my wife was put in the nursing home. The odd thing was, although we were neighbors, I hadn't really socialized with them for about six years due to my, due to my tendencies to be reclusive. So I decided to go with them when I was introduced to Brett Watson, Pastor Brett, and Kevin O'Hara, who were teachers of the Thursday night Bible class. I still can't explain what happened to me, but that night I was mesmerized not only by their words, but by the depth of knowledge and passion behind those words. It was as though for the first time in my life, I found a place where I actually felt like I belonged. The information gave me an entirely different perspective on organized spirituality, and I wanted more. Finally, intelligent, understandable teachings and a view of the Bible that I could relate to. I continue to attend the classes and also been in Sunday services. Keep in mind, I've never experienced a Christian service in my life. Then I was introduced to Susan and Sherry, <laughs> who were amazingly welcome. I felt as though we'd been friends for years. The music, the casual atmosphere, the kind and loving spirit of the members and the staff was both mind-blowing and life-altering for me. The hero series taught by Brett was so profound and relatable, it was always created it with me in mind. I think I finally found what I was missing in my life. I'm not a wealthy man. I'm on VA pension, Social Security. And when you consider my wife's medical expenses, they can be tight. However, I just enrolled in Suncoast Community Church website and made a commitment of a certain financial amount monthly. If and when I can do more, I certainly will, that others may have the opportunity to experience what I have, an entirely new paradigm on life in a way that I can even feel closer and more connected to Jesus. So he says, Larry, I, I want to say thank you to Brett and Kevin and my neighbors. Seems like an understatement, an oversimplification of my experience, but I want to share my story with you so you will never underestimate the benefit of the pres your presence and teachings. God truly has blessed me, and I remain forever grateful to the Suncoast Community Church for the amazing experience it provides. That's a good letter, isn't it? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love and grace. Thank you for the way that we're touching people's lives one at a time. Help our hearts to be open. Help us to make needs around, to meet, meet, the, meet the needs of those around us. But help us to be faithful and always giving thanks for all the things you do. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Would you stand, please? I'm going to tell you a story in closing and also remind you if you want to pray about anything, so be someone up front who would be delighted to pray with you. Here's a story. Some things are not always as they seem. I just uh, traveled on a flight, so this story resonated with me. A woman entered an airport gift shop. She had a flight that was coming. She was a little bit early, so she went an hour or so before her flight, and she bought a newspaper and a bag of cookies. She settled in the chair to read her paper and eat her cookies. There's a little table right there, and a guy sat right beside her. And she's reading her paper, and she eats a cookie, and she looks down, and he's eating her cookies. 
And she kind of pulls the bag back over to her side and eats another cookie and continues to read the paper. Next thing you know, she looks back and it's over on his side again and he's eating another cookie. <laughs> Finally, after she eats the third cookie and she's reading the paper, she looks up and she hears the cellophane wrapper. The guy wads it up, the cookie bag's empty. She gets up and she's just so, how could a guy be so rude? And she stares him down. And she goes to the other side of the waiting room. She waits and she gets on the plane. She's mad when she enters the plane. She's mad when she takes off. She was mad for the first half hour in the flight. When she, but then she needed a pen and she reached into her purse and found her pen and an unopened bag of cookies. <laughs> so I want to ask you this question. Are you mad about something today? Is it worth it? Isn't it amazing? Take a deep breath and listen very carefully. All the cookies belong to God. Share them with others. He loves you today. So do I. God bless. Thanks for coming.